Welcome back to the Soul of San Diego podcast. We're here with Gina. This is episode number six. Uh, here with Gina and Austin. Welcome back, Austin. Thank you. Recurring guest over and <laughs> over. Love it. Love to have you on. Yeah, love being here. Um, Gina is here. She has a uh, studio in um, Sola Claremont, and uh, she specializes in ex- extensions, and she just absolutely crushes it. Uh, her pricing is um, where it needs to be, and we want you guys to listen to what she has to say about where she got to her pricing and just knowing your worth as a beauty professional so that you guys can, you know, eventually do the same. Welcome, Gina. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. Yeah, thanks. It's been a little while. It's good to see you, for sure. (laughs) Um, So just kind of give us an overview, a little background of how you got to the Sola Studio, where you are today, and then we'll kind of jump right in. Okay. Um, Well, I was in regular salons with renting. Tired of the whole, you know, hustle and bustle. Who's going to get clients? And just being really busy around yourself. Um, decided, you know, I want to have my own space. So I found Austin. Yeah. This was, uh, gosh, I don't know how long ago the first time was, but probably twelve to fourteen years. Yeah. I'd say from that was a Fashion Valley or Mission Valley. Both. Both. Got it. Okay. Uh, wow. One, two years, and then I swapped over to the highway and went to the other one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I did that for maybe about five years. I think I shared at one point with someone. um, And then I got this bright idea like, oh, let's open a salon. So I got one of my business partner, one of my friends to become a business partner. Although Austin told me not to go to this place anyway. (laughs) I was biased though. So you gotta take it with a grain of salt. It was in my hometown, (laughs) so I thought, why not? Um, But that lasted about five years and it just wasn't what I expected it to be. Like kind of what, he had gave me some insight about with the owner, but yeah. I ended up calling him back like, hey, I really want to come back to Sola. So he said, oh, we have this new location that just opened in Claremont. And I went up there and checked it out. I'm like, perfect, six miles from my house. And that's how I got back in. Awesome. So I'd say I've been there, it's been over five or six years. Yeah, I think about six. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier. I think it's probably about six years. Yeah. I'm yeah. Kidding. It's flown by, that's for sure. Definitely. Yeah, I love it. And you specialize in just extensions, or what are your like services that you um, offer? At the time, no, I always did extensions okay. mixed into my. I was a color specialist. Um, mm-hmm. I taught color all over, pretty much California, Los Angeles, all the way to Florida. I worked for a couple companies, um, so I just became a color specialist due to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in beauty schools for a long time, being their against color educator, while I was still working behind the chair. I was just hustling. I'd work yeah. all day, get off, go to the schools, teach at night, get yeah. back up, start over. Where did you go to school? Was it out of uh, state? I a, no, I worked at Bellas Academy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of our folks work. Yeah. We went to school yeah. at Bellas. Yeah. 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 yeah, absolutely. Um, it's a good school. I've heard a lot of good Yeah, things. so I worked there, gosh, maybe over five years. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was traveling and teaching prior to that, and then I had three kids. So the more kids I had, I'm like, I need to stay local. So that's how I ended up in the beauty schools. While I was behind the chair, um, what? How many uh, hours a week were you working a lot. before? Like, if um, you could put a number on it, there was a point I was working 12, 12 hours a day. Wow, I was hustling five days a week, or was, it's like a healthcare was, worker shift. Yeah, I was like a nurse like, shift. Yeah, nurse I was kind of shift, obsessed. Yeah. So I got you know, just clients wanted in, and I'm like, okay, I'll squeeze one more, and I would be the first one there and the last one to leave all the time. Like always. Mm-hmm. By yep. myself in the morning, by myself at night, just because I was early and late. Yep. So I just hustled. I worked a lot of hours. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people resonate, you know, with the hustle and the grind and, you know, you got to kind of pay your dues in that, in that sense. Yeah. Um, now, when you're working that, you know, call it 60 hours a week, were you charging what you wanted to be charging at that I point? I thought so at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, I thought, mm-hmm. yeah, I was charging what I would, what I actually did, I would call around the salons and I would get their pricing and I'd make sure I was kind of within there their price range. But I would have clients once in a while say, yeah, you know, you're so cheap. And that yeah. would bother me. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, and then my, even when yeah. I was raising, I'd raise yearly $5. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I, would, I think I started out doing hair, $50 haircuts, next year, 55, 60, 65. I think the mm-hmm. max I got at that time was $75, but it was yeah. like just a little bit per year. You know, it wasn't a big jump. It was very small yeah um but it was that double booking like it was just i didn't really grow the relationships that i'm growing now because i was hurrying up you know don't be late don't be five minutes late because i got someone right after you so Mm -hmm. i think i was growing a lot of like anxiety and anger Mm -hmm. and like frustration because i was working so hard so many hours 
Um, what what uh, kind of caused you to, because I know you're probably not working like that now, um, and assume since you're, you know, we've reached out to you and, and from what we've talked about, you're obviously charging what you want to be charging now. So what kind of caused you to switch that mindset to go from working a lot and not charging what you want to be charging to working the hours that make life sustainable, right? And we all think in COVID realize that we got to have life outside of work and, and yes. to create a value to our time. And, and what kind of caused you to change that? Because I know you're doing it before COVID, but um, yeah. you know, what, what caused that switch? So COVID for sure was the number one thing that changed my business and it was for the positive. So the first shutdown we had, we were all devastated. Yeah. We're all hustling, trying to figure out like, okay, you didn't hear from home, you know, go to their house. I made color kits, you know, I did everything that I could to try to still make money, but I was still working. I was frustrated. I'm like, oh, I gotta get my car today. Load all this stuff up, I gotta drive. You know, clients, I didn't realize, oh, I'm in Alpine. I'm uh, in East Lake. Oh, <laughs> I'm in Alpine. And, you know, you're not doing the full service, so you're not charging them as much either because they're not getting the full service. So you're like, just a little bit, just I just need to get by. And then the second shutdown, I was like, you know what? The world is telling me to stop. I need to just shut down and I need to just stop and mm-hmm. save my family and just not work. So I did that. I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm not going to, I'm sorry, I'm not coming to your house anymore. I'm just going to take this time off and I'm going to, you know, gonna look at my business pretty much. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that's when I decided to really look at my business and I started looking at everything and realizing like, man, I'm working a lot. You know, I'm busting my butt so much. I'm missing so much. Of, you know, I'm working nights. I'm working weekends. I'm missing my kids' sports. I'm just trying to figure out a way to make it better. And then um, we started getting money, you know, help a little bit from the states. Like, mm-hmm. hey, we're gonna give you a grant. And we're, you know, So because I had a husband that paid the bills, that benefited me to take that money and look at where can I invest this money into my business. Mm-hmm. So I started looking at what, what do I wanna change? And so I, like I said, I did do extensions. I did tape and extensions for maybe 10 years. Okay. Um, but now there was a new hand type method, and so I started looking into those companies and companies that I couldn't afford or have the time for mm-hmm. prior because I was busy and I was hustling and just didn't have that extra money on top of it. You know, it's paying everything at the time. So I took the first, I think we got like $5,000 on one of the grants. I invested in a company. Um, can, can we talk about the Yeah, of course. Yeah. So there was a company that I've been following called NBR, and okay. I reached out, they did a discount, I think it was three thousand dollars. And mm-hmm. um, so I'm like, I'm I'm gonna buy this class. And so yep. I did that class. It was like, you know, a couple months of training and uh, I didn't love that one when I was done. So I'm like, okay, which which one's next? Yeah. So then I went to the one called Invisible Gate Extensions, which is what I'm doing now. And I invested another same thirty five hundred. Mm-hmm. And I got certified of the that. government money? Yeah. This so I got another grant nice. and I'm like, okay, I don't want this money. I don't want to use it for anything. I wanna put it back again. So mm-hmm. I that's how I got that business started. And then I believe we got to open back up for, I think you were like, you know what, if you guys want to go back to work slowly, go ahead. Yep. However, you can only see one person at a time. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I going to double book? This isn't going to work. Yeah. Like, I'm going mm-hmm. to That's because of the board, not us. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 We're just so a the, messenger. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't shoot the messenger. Said, you know, one person, the whole thing. So right. <laughs> then I realized, why am I working so hard? I did one client. And I made the same money with her coming in, with the next client coming in. I would, what I would do in the past was two people, three and a half hours. Mm-hmm. But now I got one person for an hour and a half, and I got done in three hours doing two people. So I, was, I had a question, why, why am I double booking myself? There's, there's no need for this. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of how that started with um, the clients. But then the- so it's, it sounds like, you know, one thing, there's a, there's a really uh, well-known book out there called The E-Myth, and it's all about entrepreneurship, right? Um, <clears throat> Stratton Smith, the founder of Sola, told me about this book years and years ago. And it's all about working on your business, not in your business. And what you just explained is exactly that, yeah. right? Um, you can work 60 hours a week in your business. But if you take that step back, and it sounds like COVID forced you to do that yeah. and kind of take a look at yourself, then you start to work on your business, yeah. which I think is a, is a huge, important thing. Sometimes we can be so busy with life and our clients and, you know, kids and whatever. We just work in our business and not on our business. So that... So I, smart. I agree. So I started taking even more classes in business too, because prior to this, my mindset was, I'm an educator. What's someone going to teach me? I'm already teaching people. Mm-hmm. But I had to get out of that mindset and I had to, I could always be learning 
Mm-hmm. There's always something out there. Yeah. So then I got into my pricing and I thought, how I can't do the five dollar raise. How am I gonna do this? So then I came up with the structure of package pricing. Mm-hmm. So there was no more of the client bargaining, like, you know what, I'll skip the haircut today. You know, what? I don't want that toner. You know, I, I just rather pay this price. So I thought, how can I make it to where I want to get paid by the hour? Mm-hmm. How much do I want to make per hour? And how much will it cost me to do that service per hour and make it a package? So I came up with the structure and created just four packages. So you only get this, 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 or this. Mm-hmm. And in that package, it includes a haircut, it includes a toner, it includes everything that I need to do to make your hair look good mm-hmm. without you saying, oh, I want to skip this because it puts them in control Correct. and you out of control and you took the control back yes. basically yeah. from them. And you're yeah, I think it now, like, well, I'll, I'll skip the cut. I'm like, well, it's included. You know, mm-hmm. even if you think you don't need a cut, I'm going to refresh your cut. So mm-hmm. it gives me the ability to make your hair look good every time. Yeah. Because there would be times where someone would leave and I'm like, oh, she just let me cut her hair. It looks so much better. You know? Right. So they're kind of walking advertisements for you, right? Yeah. And then you don't want them leaving, not yeah. looking you know, as good as you could make it look. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So then I went through, I, how I came up with my hourlies, I went through um, my rent, my fees, my bills, everything in the salon and how many hours a week I work mm-hmm. and divide that and come up with a number. Mm-hmm. And then how much do I want to get paid per hour to make mm-hmm. that be paid? And then we also get paid. So I came up with a number that worked for me. And then I created my package that way based off the time it took me to do that service. So I'll have like an hour and a half service, a two hour service, a two and a half hour service, and a three hour service. Mm-hmm. And that's how um, I came up with the packages. Yeah. So it sounds like simplification to a certain extent, yeah. right? Yeah. It's four options. Totally, yeah. four options. Um, and it's really charging by the hour rather than by the service. Yeah. And okay. then um, once I got into that, I actually realized like I'm working way, I, honestly, I don't, I don't work more than 30 hours a week. Yeah. You know, now I'm, I don't work past three. I'm not coming on the weekend. I don't mm-hmm. work evenings. Mm-hmm. And so if you want to see me, these are the hours that I work. Mm-hmm. And it actually has worked out. People that I thought, no way they're not going to stay because they have kids too or they're working all day. Right. They come in, they bring their laptops. I'll mm-hmm. ask them, hey, I'll turn the radio off. I'll be quiet. I'll zone out while you work. And I just do their hair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it works. You know, there was a few that were upset. You know, <laughs> I think we were talking earlier. There yep. was one that was like, oh, well, you're not going to work weekends anymore. Then I can't come. And I asked her, I'm like, well, do you work weekends? And she's like, well, no. I'm like, why should I work weekends? Just yeah. because I'm a hairdresser? Yeah. You know? So I think our industry, our, for sure, the hair It's very industry, black and white. It really is. Because mm-hmm. then they can't say anything. You can't yeah. say anything to that. And then yeah. and the hair industry is totally. becoming way more respect- respected. You know, yeah. Before it was like, oh, you're just a hairstylist. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's. You're not just a hairstylist. Yeah. So, yeah. My, uh, my wife used to be an assistant for a uh, really a big time uh, um, ad executive at a, a high end um, clothing brand. And like you said, people are more respecting hairstylist time, I think now, but um, she was her assistant. This was years ago. And the only two people that she would patch through without kind of getting screened was her husband and her hairdresser, you know? So I think they're in on, she was a woman that's in the, in um, totally drawn a blank on her, um, on what clothing line, but um you know, it's really high end, you know, up there with Gucci and Louis Vuitton and all yep. that. It's based in Irvine. Yep. And um, uh, St. John Knits, that's what it was. Okay. You know, which is um, kind of a, you know, certain kind of her older demographic. But this guy was, um, I said, you know, it's my husband calling or my hairdresser is the only two people that pass through right to me. Otherwise, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and not everybody I think is like that. She's a woman that definitely needed to keep and wanted to keep herself, you know, yep. hair looking good. But I think a lot of times people are now respecting each other's time a little more because they're more kind of uh, protective of their time. And then what you said earlier about, hey, do you work weekends? I mean, don't you want to see your kids on the weekends when they're home from school? It's like, well, of course. So like, well, I do too. And yeah. I, I've noticed in the salon since COVID has hit that salons are less, more busy on Mondays and less busy on Saturdays mm-hmm. for that exact reason. Yeah, for sure. Which I find interesting. And we noticed that. Um, we have a bar card that kind of runs around all the salons and you know, I work every other Saturday and uh, I went to Encinitas and I go in on the Saturday with the bar card. I'm all hyped. I have, uh, you know, mimosas and everything for everyone. And I go in and it's just dead. No one's working on a Saturday. I'm like, what? I always thought everyone worked on Saturdays, but after COVID, it's not that way anymore. Monday, Monday, Sunday, Monday's off. It's now weekends off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. And if you really want your hair cut by me, then, and I do think the fact that so many people are working from home, 
mm-hmm. gives that flexibility for a couple hours. They're not in their office next to their boss. Right. I mean, that's kind of, you know, a lot more people, I think, in California are, are kind of freelance or gig workers. So that gives them flexibilities out here. Um, but the people that are more corporate jobs, you know, work a lot from home. So it kind of gives the ability to sit in your chair and have their computer and work. Right. Yeah. And not, you know, tell their boss, hey, I'm going to be gone for two and a half hours, you know, um, while I leave the office and come back to my hair done, which is not acceptable. But now it's kind of become acceptable. So if you right. kind of take that schedule, um, take your schedule back and do it when you want to do it, then I think people are going to accommodate more than a lot of people realize. Yeah. Definitely. And I think too, in this business, what I want to touch on too is yep. finding your niche at this point. Like okay. that's, that's how I got into the extension part was just what can make me the most money to be honest. And that's really what's at and yeah. it's a luxury service. So mm-hmm. you're dealing with a different clientele because they are going to spend money, you know, and you're dealing with a lot of them are, really good and they're high in their business, they are very successful. Mm-hmm. So just it's just finding that niche that works for you to be able to charge the way that you want to charge for the money that you want to make. Now when you switch to um, a different you know pay structure or, or you know billing structure if you want to call it, did you lose many people that said that's just not that didn't work for I mean, me, sorry I'm out. The people that I probably wanted to lose, you know, the mm-hmm. the, the cheaper clients. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I definitely you know, saw that change, but mm-hmm. for the most part, it was perfect timing because, hey, I'm reopening, so here's my new structure, and it was done that That's way. really perfect timing. Yeah, so yeah. I sent an email out, I, I talked to them in the chair, you know, and I, I even said, you know, I understand that this pricing doesn't fit your budget, I have a ton of referrals, I have a great referral system, mm-hmm. so I have tons of people that I can send them to, mm-hmm. um, and the, the, the hard part was, they started seeing like, oh, you only do extensions now. I'm like, no, I'm still doing color, but eventually, you know, yeah. I'm gonna be doing. I will only do your color if you're getting extensions. And that's yeah. where I'm at now. Cool. And so, what uh, that did though was to create me to work sometimes five, six days a week currently because I'm switching. So if a new client calls for extensions, I will come in on my day off. So that's what's happening right now. Mm-hmm. And then what I do with them is I double book. I book them two appointments. So it's making it harder for the people who aren't getting extensions to book an appointment. Mm. So that's how the transition is working. Kind of slowly, kind of yeah. organically phasing them out. Yeah. So okay. you know, if they have an opening, or you know, they look online like, oh, she's she, she, she not available. So it's kind of, as much as I love them and I hate to lose them, it's just the only way that I can make this work. Right. So right now I am working a little bit more than I'd like to work, but yeah. you know, I, I'm at a place now where I'm like two people a day and that's it. It's, yeah. I'm getting older. Oh, wow. My body hurts. I'm tired. And, you know, right. I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to work those Got to be nice anymore. to yourself. Yeah, Got to be nice to your health, your mental health. Yeah. yeah. It's having your boundaries because, you know, oh, can you just squeeze me in? I'm like, sorry, you know, I can't. Yeah. Just because. Good for you. A lot of people yeah. can't say no. Just you got you to gotta work. You got to work smarter, not harder. You got to mm-hmm. work less.